Amen. To feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. I'll tell you what, we had a good time last night. Amen. There was a lot of people that was listening last night. Amen. The other night, amen, we had a good service. Amen. The Monday night, we had a good service. Amen. I'm looking for a good service again tonight. Amen. amen. I hope and pray that a lot of people uh, uh, surround this square. Amen. Tonight, amen, I'm, I'm looking for uh, God to do something great. Amen. Hallelujah. We prayed for some people last night. Amen. And I believe God's going to touch some people. Amen. I believe he's going to heal some people. Amen. You say, well, Brother Miller, I don't believe in that. Well, let me tell you something. Amen. About what? 15 years ago? Mm -hmm. It's been a while. About 12, 13 years. We were up here on the square and we was having revival. Amen. And there was this woman come from TV. Every night she sat right out there in that spot right after where that man just pulled in at and she would sit there every night during the revival and one night she said i want to get up there on top on the square up here. i want somebody to help me i didn't know she couldn't walk amen and she said i need somebody to help me up and her husband brought her up here and she sat right there where that speaker is at right there that's a uh, monitor amen and she sat there and she just cried while the service was going on Amen. And the Lord spoke to me and said she's going to walk. And I told her, I said, you believe God's going to let you walk tonight? And she said, I believe God can do anything. I said, well, he's going to heal you tonight. Amen. I believe it. Amen. He spoke it to me. And while service was going on, she said, brother, can I sing a song? I said, you sure can. Took a mic over there. Amen. She could really sing. And I said, man, I'll tell you what, you can feel the Lord. Amen. But when the service was uh, we give the altar call and we begin to pray. Amen. I went over there and we begin to pray for her. And I told her, I said, now the Lord said he was going to heal you tonight. Amen. If you've got the faith that God's going to do it, he's going to do it. And amen. It wasn't me. Amen. It done it. Amen. It was God. And, and we begin to pray for her. And the Lord said, help get her up out of that wheelchair. And we got her up out of that wheelchair. And we begin to pray for her. And I told her, the Lord said, every step you take, you take it in the name of Jesus. And she started to wobble and started to walk. And, and she wobbled a little bit more and she started to walk. And we had a hold of her. And all of a sudden she just let go of us. And she took off walking back and across in front. Amen. And then she's just praising the Lord. Amen. God did it. We didn't do it. She came back the next night. She walked up the steps. Amen. Didn't have a wheelchair. That's the time yes. we serve tonight. Amen. Yes. Something like that tonight. Amen. I'm looking to see somebody get saved. I'm looking to see somebody get blessed tonight. Up here on the square. Amen. I'm going to go I'm going to Amen. But listen. How many wants to get in tonight? Amen. How many wants to worship the Lord? All right, Amen. come on. Want to come back to the Lord. Monday night, she's been here every night. Amen. That's right, amen. Little girl right there, amen, she's been here every night. Amen. Can you tell me that's what God can do? Amen. That's right, amen. Hallelujah. If nobody else gets saved, that's worth it all. That's right, amen. amen. This revival will be worth it all. But I'm looking for more to be saved, amen. That's right, amen. Uh, we come don't on. Know who prayed last night. Sister Missy, because they're swinging around the courthouse last night. Amen. They had their heads in the car listening. Amen. We don't know if they bowed their head and asked God to save them last night. We don't know. Amen. But I, I want us to all to stand. Amen. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. And then we're going to get into some worship. That's right. Amen. Amen. Come on. Listen, Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we come to you tonight, we thank you, God, for another opportunity, God, to be back up here on the square. Lord God, that you have gave us the breath of life to breathe one more time. Lord, to come, Lord, to worship you, God, out in the opening. Lord God, to give everybody a chance to hear the word of God tonight. Lord, hear the songs of Zion. Heavenly Father, God, I pray, Lord, if they be someone under the sound of our voices, uh, Lord God, that they would find you tonight. Uh, Lord, that they would surrender it all over to you tonight. God, give their heart and life to you, Lord. Uh, Heavenly Father, that's why we're up here. 
here for tonight, God, is to see a soul saved, to see someone set free, see someone delivered tonight, God. Heavenly Father, we ask you bless the singers, bless those that sing tonight and want to use them tonight. Heavenly Father, God, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, and the church say amen. Those that's going to help Sister Lord, go on.
Amen. This little light of mine, yeah. I'm going to let it shine. Amen. Yeah. Jesus ain't a little light to me. He's a big That's light. Right. Amen. 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 We need to change that to this big light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Amen. He said be a light. Amen. In the darkness. Amen. Amen. Darkness can't comprehend light. Amen. Amen. A lot of people out here walking in darkness, Brother Joe, don't know it, amen? Don't realize they're walking in darkness, amen? But let me tell you something, the devil creeps in the darkness. Amen, the devil likes to lurk in the darkness. That's right, amen. Amen, that's when he wants to come to your mind, amen? That's when he wants to come to you. When you're laying there asleep at night, he wants to come, amen, and try to torment your mind. Amen, he wants to try to torment you, amen? Try to get you discouraged, amen? Try to get amen. you, amen, not to want to worship God. Amen, the devil plays with your mind. He's a mind game player. Right. That's right. Amen, brother. Amen. He's a mind game player. He That's right, to amen. Play Amen. But listen, amen. Tonight, I believe that God's going to do something mighty. Amen. I felt it all morning. I woke up, Sister Teresa, with the Lord on my mind. Amen. I woke up happy. Amen. Because you know why? Because God woke me up this morning. Amen. Uh, even though I didn't get to sleep much, between my wife and the dog, my wife popping chewing gum. And my dog, woo, woo. And I had to make them hush and make her quit popping chewing gum. And then I finally got to get some rest and I woke up. Amen. And God had something on my mind. Amen. And I, I began to teach some people. Amen. To tell them. Amen. I'm, I, I like going to try to come be with us sometime. Amen. And uh, listen, I got a phone call. Amen. I've been praying, asking God. Amen. To open some doors for me to go preach the gospel. Amen. I ain't getting no doors around here open up. God said, I'll open them up somewhere else for you. Amen. So the 15th of October, I'll be in Lexington, Kentucky. Amen. On a Saturday, it's starting at 11 o'clock. Amen. I'm going to be preaching to a bunch of people in Lexington, Kentucky. Amen. A big conference. Thing. Amen. And I'm excited. Amen. God said, I'll open the doors. Amen. When I woke up this morning, I heard I'm opening the doors. And right after I heard that, the phone called Come in on the phone. Amen. And I'm excited to see what God's going to do. Amen. They said, well, we need you up tonight. If you need to come up here on a Friday night, we'll put you up in a nice hotel. I said, no. I said, we got something planned Friday night at our church. Amen. It's our uh, fifth anniversary. It's our uh, and a homecoming service. Amen. A celebration. Amen. We've been there five years. Amen. And I thank the Lord for that. Amen. The devil said we wouldn't be there six months, but we've been there five years. Amen. amen. And I'm looking forward, amen, to the blessing that's coming. Amen. And the promise amen. that God has promised us, Sister Teresa. Amen. I'm excited. Amen. And we're going to see somebody get touched tonight here on the square. All around us. Back over here, they're having karaoke. We're having church. Amen. Over here. Amen. And guess what? God's going to let it echo out. Amen. Amen. When they begin to sing them songs, amen, God's going to let it echo out. When Sister Darlene gets up here to sing, amen, Sister Connie, Sister Nisha, amen, we're going to have us a shouting time. Amen. I'm looking for a good time in the Lord tonight. Amen. amen. Come on, Sister Darlene, get us started.
precious blood. Amen. That blood will save you. Amen. It will cleanse you whiter than snow. Amen. It will wash every way your sins. Amen. Every one of them. Amen. That blood can wash you whiter than snow. Come on, Sister Missy. Oh. 
Lord. Amen. Talk it on the phone. Amen. Everybody's got a phone now. Talk it on the phone. Amen. Tell everybody to get started. Amen. On their way home. Amen. All right. We're going to turn it over to Brother Wayne. Amen. Let's all get in tonight. Amen. And let's just back Brother Wayne as he brings the word for tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I, I tell you what. You can't beat this karaoke. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This comes straight from God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Good to be here tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I know you kill me, but you know what's important tonight is sinners. Yep. Very tonight the word. I'm going to read to you and preach to you what the Lord laid on my heart today. Last night, we'll be reading in Ezekiel tonight. Prophet, a man of God. Chapter 18. Where he's talking about backslidden, backslidden nation and sinners alike. He says here in chapter 18, verse 4. It said, Behold, you pay attention to this. This stuck out to me this morning. I done read it before, but this here really stuck out to me. Before all souls, behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth shall die. The soul that sinneth, sinneth shall die. It shall die. Verse 20 says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteous shall be upon him, and the witness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn, listen here, if the wicked will, but if the wicked would turn from all the sins that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure? Listen here. God says, Have I any pleasure in all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God? And not that he should return from his own ways, from his ways and live. Verse 27 says, Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness, that he hath committed and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed. He shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet saith the house of Israel, The way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? Therefore I will judge you. God saying, I'm going to judge you. O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord. He said, Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby you have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, 
turn yourselves and live ye. If I had a thought tonight, it would be turn and live. You know, as I was reading this and studying a little bit, I saw some things, you know. I began, the Lord showed me something that I've never seen before. You know, it's a little longer and later down here a little bit. He said, well, Brother Wayne, where are you at? Well, I'll just hold on. I'm not going to hurry tonight. I know the wind's chilly, but there's souls being laid in the balance tonight. And their soul is important to us tonight. You know, there in verse, uh, verse 4 there, if you go back and read it there, he said, Behold, all souls are mine, as the souls of the Father, so also the soul of the soul. Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. It says in Re uh, Romans 6 and 20, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You go on, he said, he said he gives of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death, sinner friend. The wages of death is sin, that's matter. He said tonight, come unto me, turn and live. I want to forgive you of all my sins. You say you got all that wrong? No, that ain't all wrong down. I got some other things tonight that somebody needs to understand. And I, God's saying you need to turn and live because one day you're going to stand before a just God and you, your works is going to find you out and he's going to look at you and you're going to be the reason that you in hell. But tonight he's saying if you'll come to me and then if you lay down your sins and all your burdens, I will take you in. I'll cast it as far as the east is the west and I'll never bring it back to your remembrance. Here in verse 23, he said, right. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? You know, you go on to Ezekiel 33 and 11. He said, Say unto them, As I live, the Lord God, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in death the wicked. But the wicked turn from his ways and live. He said, Turn ye, turn ye, for your, from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? Verse 30 says this. It says, Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourself from all your transgressions. So, iniquities shall not be your rulers. He said here, Ezekiel 7 and 3, Now is the end come upon me, and I will send my anger. He said he's going to send his anger upon your sin, and will judge. He's going to judge us. Sister Nora said, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thy abomination. He's going to repay you for sinning. He go, you got a payday coming, honey, for all your sins. And that payday is called hell tonight. You say, why are you standing around here? I'm trying to get a point tonight across that Jesus is going to, God's going to judge us all, honey. And you better make sure you repent of all your sins. He goes on to say, there he said, who will render Romans 2 and 6 says, Who will render to every man according to his deeds? He see that? He's telling us in Ezekiel. He's telling us in the New Testament. You can't say it ain't in neither book, honey, because I just read it to you. He's going to judge us all. He's going to tell us, Hey, I called you to repent, but yet you took a death here and you would not hearken to me tonight. He said, Somebody has better turn. Then hell's going to be your own friend. That's God's work. That's the Lord's work. That ain't my work. I'm just interpreting it just a little bit for you. And you go on down a little bit further there. He says there. 
Verse 23, I'm still in verse 23, but yet your reverence over to Ezekiel 33 and 20. He says, yet you say the way of the Lord is not fair or, or equal. O ye house of Israel, I will judge everyone after his own ways. There it is again. He's telling us that he's going to warn us. You go on down a little further. And in Matthew, he agreed to he said and said, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You say, how do you know it's at hand? Open your eyes and look and watch and look around you. You'll know that the end is near, friend. You know that he's about to step out on that cliff and the cloud that time will be no more. He loves us all that he's warned us tonight. The other night, he was going after Stephen. I don't know who he's going after tonight, but he's coming after somebody and he's telling you tonight, you better turn if you want to live. You better turn from that pathway of sin that you're on because you ain't going to live one of these days. You're going to be in torment night and day like I said the other night. You're going to be tormented night and day and the devil's going to be sitting back. No, he ain't going to be sitting back laughing at you. He's going to be burning air with you. You may think he's going to sit back and laugh at you and then little demons, but yet they're going to be there in torment with you, honey, because the God made that place for them and all of his little demons. Hey, if you go there tonight, you'll go as a press packer because he said the most he said the best thing that he had for you and I that we can have life and that we can have it more abundantly. He said, turn and live tonight. Turn and live. Amen. Amen. You know, I was reading that cross reference over into Revelation. Oh, brother, why don't go to Revelation? I'm scared of the book of Revelation. Well, you need to be scared of something. But you know what? Instead of being scared, why don't you try getting saved and blood bought under the blood of the Lamb? And quit worrying about what? Being scared of the book of Revelation. Start being scared of the one that's able to destroy your body and soul into the pits of hell. And everything else will be taken care of as long as you've got it covered by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. He said here, in Revelations 2 and 5. <clears throat> Remember thy Lord. From whence thou art fallen. And repent and do the first works. Or I will come quickly. Or else I will come quickly and remove the candlestick out of this place, except I repent. You know, I got to think about that candlestick. Candlestick. You can preach it different ways, but the days I'm sitting there meditating and praying, that candlestick, Sister Norma. There's a soul. As I was sitting there, the Lord said, soul. Soul. So I done some looking up. Our body is a lamp stand. That candle inside of us. Some of you candle ain't lit tonight. But your soul is not lit. You're living for the devil. He's saying tonight, if I can read what I've got go down here with the wind of blowing and different things, he said, a lamp stand is a tripod or a stand for supporting or holding the lamp. See, you look at us tonight as human beings, sinner friend. You can say, preacher, you're crazy. Well, I may be, and that's all fine and handy. But sometimes you have to look at things through the spiritual eye to understand what we're talking about. He said, to, as I was sitting there, he said, your body is that candlestick, that lampstand there. And that candlestick is a, you're the representing the candlestick there. That's what candlestick means. But that candle is the soul. And a lot of souls don't have that light as we preached about the other night. You ain't got it lit. Jesus is wanting to light somebody's candle tonight. He's telling you to turn and live for Him. But friend, it's up to you. I thought about bringing some candles and I thought, well, the wind's going to be
in and I'm going to hold it up right and let it represent a soul tonight that will fire inside of you tonight. Honey, if you've got it, pray be unto God. But if you ain't got it, woe be unto you. But the good news is tonight, you can get that candle lit tonight and God can come down not only with a light to witness in that thing, honey, he'll set that thing on fire and make you a worker for him if you're willing to, but you're going to have to lay aside every sin and every way that's going to even beset you when the devil comes to knock it. Don't go to a running, go to a pray and say, God, I'm yours. I know you're going to protect me because I'm I'm going to live. I've turned and I'm going to live. Amen. Amen. You know, I got to thank you, Sister Norma. There in Luke 2 there. About that rich man that had the bonds. Luke 12 and 16. He said, and he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plenty, plenty. And he, the rich man, bought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pour down my barns, pour down my barns, and build greater. And there I will bestow, bestow all my fruits and all my goods. And I'll say to my soul, it's not his soul. He said, there is evil with God's soul. He said, that soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Oh, but listen to what God said. He said, But God said unto him, Thy fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that left up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. That rich man thought he had it all. But he forgot that he didn't have the money or the ability to buy that soul and to live forever. You say, preacher, you're crazy. Hey, I'm just telling you, there's a lot of people, as Brother David said last night, who did he thought he could do everything and live on, live on and do everything and not die. Honey, we all gonna die. This rich man, he was looking ahead of the tomorrow. Tomorrow never came to him. He woke up off in eternity because the Lord said, this night thy father will be, my soul be required of thee. Friend, let me tell you something. He had no doubt he had a chance to turn and live, but he chose to chase the things of the world. He chose to ch chase the financial things of the world to be recognized in the community, to be housed on a pedestal, to be thought of mighty in the, in the community that he was in. But God come on the scene and he said this night my soul will be required of you. Why are you getting that tonight? God told him he wanted his soul back and the works that he had did, now he was going to pay because he woke up in hell being tormented night and day in those place. Sinner friend, back slide, you better come to your sinner because God is calling for somebody's soul. He's calling for you tonight. He's saying turn and live. Why? 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 Did he do it? Because he knows he's fixing to say, son, go get my children. He wants you to be part of the bride. He wants you to be one of his children tonight. He wants you to come into the boat. He's saying turn and live. Because once we turn and start living for the Lord, we won't die. We will die. Honey. You say, well, brother, wait. That breath, that last breath that you take, I'm going to close my eyes. Breath is going to be no more inside this mortal fleshly body. That may be true, but hallelujah, we just going to go to sleep in Jesus. Even though he's calling for our soul, when we die, Sister North, Sister Kathy, we're going to wake up on the other side of Jordan, a shouting and 
the judgment. We're going to do what we set out to do to make heaven our home. Jesus is going to say, He's going to judge us for our works because we've been a follower, because we've accepted Him. We won't go back before with the best of our ability. No matter what comes our way, we did what He wanted us to do. We served Him to the very best, to the very end. He's going to walk our soul one of these days. But hallelujah, we're going to live. My, 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 we're going to live. But the sinner is going to die. And then he's going to get this second death that the word talks about there. There's a second death, friend, for you tonight that's lost and undone. There's a second death for you. And it's called hell. It's called hell. Tonight, you don't have to worry about hell if you just fall down somewhere and repent and say, Lord, I want to turn my life around and I want to start living for you. You may be under the sound of what? Around the square or down one of the other streets or on one of these things that are recording on tonight. But hallelujah, Jesus wants you to turn and live tonight because he comes to save my, 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 the Lord. He comes to reach those that was lost, he come to do his father's will. He come to set us free, to deliver the captive, to deliver the sick, to set us all free. He said, whosoever will, let him come. He's calling somebody tonight. He's saying, turn and live and come unto me and I'll give you rest like you never had before. I'll give you something that you never felt before. I'll give you something, hey, that you don't know what Get the dirt off of them and do the things that 
that he needs to do in order for them to get things straightened out and to line up for him and to do what he's calling, calling you to do, in which is to live for him and to be alive and get that light, that candlestick, all right and right, and be that sheep that's not all right him that cannot be him and let your father be glorified in heaven. Because Jesus is wanting you to turn and live. God does said that in Ezekiel and over in the New Testament of life that you're going to stand in front of him. That he's going to judge you. He's going to tell you to depart from him. You workers of iniquity that he knows you not because you chose to live the lifestyle. You chose to shoot up. You chose to drink. You chose to party. Teenagers driving around the square. Down the road, you better straighten up and give your life. You better take that one like Stephen should have took it the other night. And like the one last night she took it. But they should have. As far as we know, they didn't take it. But you know what? Our hands are clean because we're out here reaching the Lord. Whether they, they ain't going to have no excuse, brother they when they stand before the Lord, he's going to say, you remember there at Baron Kelly, Glasgow, Kentucky, when them people were up there on the square and you drove by and you hollered and you mocked them and you made fun of them. Well, yet they was telling you about me and what I wanted you to do. And that one told you that I was telling you to turn and live. But you right. chose not Amen. to turn. You chose to stay in the filthy life that you was living in. Now you're going to get your reward, which is called hell. Share, friend, backslide. You better start coming to the Lord. You better take this warning tonight because he's speaking to say, son, Sleep 
to the Lord have come up by the grace. You and I that are alive and remain, we're going to come up right behind us. But woe to those that have, they don't know the Lord that decided to stay in their bed of sin. You're going to be left behind wishing those people were here to pray with you in the spirit of God. Lord, to God. You won't have time to turn and live there. It'll all be over. It'll all be over. It ain't going to be a second coming for you to get another chance to give your life to the Lord. Honey, you better wake up and quit believing in life out of the pits of hell that the devil is putting it out there tonight. You better harvest and you better turn and live for the Lord because he's fixing to take somebody's soul just like he did the rich man there in the book of Luke there. He's fixing to take one of your souls. That's right. Amen. <clears throat> Come on. Get to Jesus. He'll lead you and he'll guide you where you need to go. All we want to do is get you saved, get you under the cover of the blood, and then let's talk, talk to you a little bit. And if you say, well, y'all don't believe the way I do, and I don't want to go the way, go the way y'all do, well, we'll gladly tell you to get you a Bible believing church that'll preach you the truth and gladly show you a few here and there that might you might like, but don't just go go say I don't like it and I ain't going back again because that ain't what he said to do. He said to turn and live. If you expect if you come tonight and you get saved and get lit and begin to sign and live for the Lord, honey, pick up that cross and follow him and pack it just as many times as you have to pick that thing back up and throw it on your shoulders. You pick it up and you throw it on that shoulder because hey, it ain't time to go back to the things of the world. It's time to church. And the sinners are like, they're getting delivered like there ain't no the world. Just like the rich man there, he thought he had plenty of time. The church world, they can say, God, plenty of time. Oh, no, Lord, I wasn't going to go back. Well, yeah, I'm going to go back because you say no more. The church world, thanks that they got plenty of time, that they can never listen. Yeah, why do you go there? Because you got stuff around this square that thinks they're ready to go. That they go to the church, they put their time in a love offering basket and got it all covered. But he said it ain't going to work. You just fool yourself and believe in a lie, you're going to be damned. Sinner, backslide. You better turn and leave him. You better turn and you better live tonight. You say, well, I'm all striding. I'll get up in the morning. I can always do. You go to the it go. Well, I will not make it to that vehicle. Well, I will not make it to work. Well, I will not make it back home. He said, Why are you standing here? Because he holds our soul in the palm of his hand, he holds everything. In our body, our natural body, He holds it all. Our life, style, whatever you want to call it, our things that we do here is going to pay. One day we're going to pay for it. And we had better decide, sinner, you had better decide tonight if you're going to live for the Lord. You say, well, I'm young, preacher. Well, I was too, and I thought the same way you did. But, honey, if I could go back and do it all over again, I'd go back and I'd do it all over. And I would have got in church, and I would have stayed in church. If I know the good things that God had in store for me, I would have stayed there. I would have stayed living for Him. I would have gladly turned it all over to Him. Because let me tell you something. There's joy unspeakable and full of glory in serving the Lord tonight. Why don't you just turn and decide that you're going to live for Him tonight? Why don't you just turn and live for the Lord tonight? If you want to come up here and pray, we'll gladly pray with you. If you want to pray in your car, pray in your car and haul out the winner. I'll turn and now I'm going to live and I will find me a church to start going to and worshiping this man called Jesus that died on a cross for me. He's telling somebody tonight, I don't know who you are or where you are, but you better turn and start 
not living for him because your soul's going to be requiring you. You say, why? You keep saying that. You just said it two or three times because the Holy Ghost keeps saying repeat, repeat, repeat. He didn't say repent, way. He said repent, repeat it, repeat it. And tonight I'm telling you, you better repent tonight and make everything right and get it under the blood of Jesus because if you don't, my, 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 your soul, when you go before him, you ain't going to like the result. You can't do what you think you can and make it into him. Amen. Quit letting the devil sell you some cheap counterfeit tickets. Because that's all he's doing. He's selling somebody tonight a counterfeit ticket. Telling you you can do everything that you don't have to live. You don't have to turn your life around. You don't have to straighten up the lifestyle that you're in. But you have to do that. You have to have that right ticket with that right number on it with the right name and it covered in blood. That's what you've got to have tonight if you expect to live in eternity for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and to walk down the street of go and to shout on Hallelujah Square. I don't know what it's going to be like, but one day I know I want to go. I don't know what hell it's going to be like. I can't even begin to imagine and I sure don't want to go. Somebody better turn tonight and had better begin to live because he's calling you just like I said, he's calling somebody to turn and to live tonight. He said, I'm going to read it one more time, Mary Ezekiel, and then I'm going to sit down. The choice is yours tonight. The choice is yours. Verse 4, 18 and 4. Behold, all, all, everybody say all, all. souls are mine. The soul of the Father, so also the soul of thy Son is mine. The soul that sinned shall die. The soul that sinned should die. Friend and I, if you're not ready to go, I can stand up here and beg you to come blue in the face. And it wouldn't be no good. Because if you won't listen to the Spirit of the Lord tonight, and I know he's dealing with somebody. I know it. But be on the shelf of that. That he's dealing with somebody. The old man brother, they talk about a tent revival. And as we start, as and we couldn't find one, a tent, and I have a place to get a tent. I was driving around the square. I told Brother David, I went home and I told him. I said, you know, you talk about this here in the Bible. He said, yeah. How we can't get no tent. He said, yeah. I said, well, you remember when we used to be on the square? He said, yeah. I said, well, as I drove around, I just tapped a little to the left. I told Connie, I said, we don't need no tent. We'll go right here. We can go right here. We've done it many times before. Friend, somebody tonight is needing this week. Of, this week, yes, need of the Lord. I don't know where you are. You may live in one of these new apartments that they fixed up. You may be sitting there with one some of your hard liquor, and the devil and the little demons tell you. Ignore that, and you sit there, you're being pulled one way, and you're being pulled another way, and you undecided tonight. 
But let me tell you tonight, you better turn and you better live for the Lord because He's calling you tonight. Turn and live. Turn and live. Don't you know he's calling you? 
you tonight. Amen. He's calling your name tonight. He's saying, child, won't you just come home? Child, won't you just come home? You've wandered in the wilderness way too long. Why don't you just come on home? Hallelujah. God's calling. God's calling you tonight.
I just looked over in Italy a while ago, amen, just a little bit ago, amen, and uh, hailstones again, amen, uh, bigger than softballs, amen, then over in uh, another country, amen, it's snow, just like snowballs coming out of the sky, you remember how we was getting